It's the Wayne County Football Show with Marshall Wood and head football coach Jack Hankins. Brought to you by Extreme Guns, Alpha Insurance, Boondock Eddies, Circle C Tractor. All the information you need for Wayne County football. Welcome to our show tonight. Coach Hankins, trust all is well with you today. Uh, how are things going for you? It's going, it's going. Yeah, it's going. yeah we're gonna, we got a lot to talk about tonight, but I want to hit this with us first. This should be our last show that we're going to do. Uh, summertime's coming up, and we're going to give you a break because you're still going to be busy coaching during the summer, but uh, we're going to come back hopefully on August the 9th and the 23rd to get us ready for the season to kick off with equipment. Uh, but that's, that's what's to come, but... Let's come back to now for a bit. Spring game, Wayne County, Poplarville, go, as they Ooh. say. <laughs> well, let me tell you, spring was good for us. Yeah. We had a good spring. And I think anybody with uh, anybody with some football sense got to see that the Wayne County team we ran out there this spring wasn't the same Wayne County team as last year. Mm -hmm. um, we It was a good spring. Obviously, we did not win the game. We had a four-quarter game with Poplarville that the varsity lost 21-0. The junior varsity tied 14-14. And spring football is a time to evaluate your people mm -hmm. and your toughness. And we saw a lot of good things that we like. Mm -hmm. um, the lineman was much improved. Uh, opened up the first play with some pancakes, um, mm -hmm. knocking people around. And, and there's some people that, that we've got to – well, let me just say it like this, that probably won't be on the field come fall when we get ready to play our jamboree with Jackson. And, and what well, we're – we found some personnel that we've got to change and make better. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at doing some things, and that's what spring is for. That's what it's about. You give folks a chance. Mm -hmm. You evaluate. You look at it. Uh, for the Wayne County Nation, I'm not discouraged at all. Sure, we wanted to win the game. I saw a lot of good things and uh, saw, saw, saw a lot of good things. And we're, we're going we're gonna to come to work this summer and get even – even more better, and, uh, <laughs> I love that term. And more get uh, and just get get this thing going, get these eagles flying like we're supposed to. I have no doubt. Uh, let, let's 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 start and break down with the JV, and let's talk about offensively about them and what you saw there, and some things that might have encouraged you, some things that I'm just going to let you address the offense, JV offense, as you want to. Sure. Well, I'm going to tell you, we we did a good job. I, I really think that JV offense line is going to be really good in the mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. They did some good things. Uh, we had a, 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 I guess I'd say a new running back. He didn't, he didn't play last year, but Malik Odom came out and uh, he had a, he was number seventeen in JV. Yes, sir. He, had, he had a good night. He yeah. had some good runs and uh, he still learn, he's still learning everything, you know. And, and but he, he had a, uh, he had a good night for us. And again, that offensive line yeah. is one reason why we had some guys that caught the ball. Jacob did a good job uh, running the offense and. You know, right now we've got it on both levels, JV. I know you meant JV and offense. JV, we caught some balls, but, I, you know, varsity, I know we'll get to it. we we got to get better. But there were those young receivers, I'm looking forward to seeing them grow and get better. And Jacob's going to do a good job mm -hmm. throwing the football. He understands the game and understands what we're trying to do. So I I like what we did did there. You know, we jumped out 14-0. I'd like to see us push it a little further. Um, you know, they come back there in the, in the last and beat us with their – single wing so uh defense made some good adjustments on the flies we just had some guys flying around the football and making plays on that jv and i they they were they were actually fun to watch we have a lot of those guys yeah. you know we i want to marshall i'm not mistaken i want to say we dress 42 freshmen that will be sophomores next year so there's a lot of those guys and they they went out and played and they, and they went out and played good so uh you know yeah. I'm, I'm excited for that bunch you know, I, I, looking at them, you know, just walking around out there, man, they're a good-looking bunch on the hoof. I they mean, are. they really are. They look athletic, and they, you know, they carry themselves well. And like I say, they made a, they made a strong showing. Yeah. I, I was really impressed with yeah. the, with the. I'm, I'm excited with that yeah. guy, with yeah. those guys. And let me tell you, those guys did not have a single turnover. Well, you know, I you know, I don't think you had a turnover in either the JV we, or the. We bar. didn't have one on either either level. No, sir. Yeah. Now, that's that was good. You know. When I came here, that was that had it plagued us for yeah. a while. So, uh, yeah. man, I'm I'm proud of that. No yeah. turnovers, even though it was a spring game, and it don't matter. Well, everything matters, you know. Yeah. It does matter, but yeah. I, no turnovers. That's in six quarters of football. I'll pretty, take I'll take that pretty, every day. That's what it's supposed pretty, to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
uh, JV offense, uh, defensively, anything you want to say about the JV defense here? Just they swarmed to the ball. If you yeah. saw them, they swarmed and uh, they cut out a lot of those pullers and they just they did a good job adjusting. We had a lot of guys that played on that side of the ball. So, you know, you, you saw a lot of – there's a lot of ninth graders that played and got to the football. But um, not, just, just getting after it, man. They, they got after it and they – it, they they had fun. It looked yeah. like they had fun swarming and getting to the ball. Um, I, I'm excited about that whole group. Uh, let, let's roll up here to the varsity and let's talk about the varsity offense for a minute or two. I mean, what we what we? Well, we didn't score, so that's that's <laughs> you can't win if you don't <laughs> score. <laughs> but uh, right. again, we had some. We had some missed opportunities. Uh, again, we had some new people out there in different spots. They didn't quite understand their role. Yeah, we're going to get that fixed. Uh, we had we we got to be able to. Here, here's the thing. I want to see our offensive line be physical. And the, at, at many times in the night, we were physical, and we actually did some good things with their front. Now we didn't block on the perimeter at all, mm -hmm. like we were supposed to. Yeah. And uh, you know. It was – this is what's good. And, I, and I, you know, people to see the big picture understand this. So, you know, and, and this is not an excuse, not at all. Isaiah Boyd didn't play. He's our starting running back. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been nursing a hamstring injury. We've tried to get over it, and he has fought that thing, and he <laughs> wanted to play. And we just made the decision Wednesday. You know, he couldn't go full speed Wednesday in practice. So, we, 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 we put him on the shelf. Yeah. So, he, he couldn't go. It was great to run our freshman – uh, KJ Wally and 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 Malik um, KJ KJ probably got most of the he got most of the um, I guess I, I'm trying to figure out how many carries he had he had most of the carries he's a freshman here for us yeah that that was good for us um, let me tell you last year just think back when when Isaiah went down week seven we we didn't we really didn't have anybody that could take his spot and run these plays um, this year. We played a lot of different backs. Um, I, I thought KJ did a good job. Uh, he 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 ran sometimes like a ninth grader because he is a ninth grader, but he ran with some toughness. He got um he got in the holes. You know Malik, who we mentioned last year, yeah. will be ready. Zay Owens played a little bit for us in there. He's a he's another he's one of our really small guys. If you saw him, um, Zay was number seven. Mm -hmm. He he did a good job. So. We just went through a whole four quarter game with basically two and three backup running backs having to play, which does nothing but create depth for next year. Yes. So if something happens to Isaiah or a starter, we've got guys that now have played. Even though it's spring, they got four quarters of games experience. They would have never got. If Isaiah's healthy, those guys probably don't see the field. Yeah. So man, that's that's good. People say, Well, that's, that's good. We we created depth intentionally, unintentionally. Yeah. That there was depth created there that, that we didn't have last year. That's important going through a season. If you want to go fifteen games like it takes. I mean yeah. that you better have some depth or it won't make it. Yeah. You won't make it, you know? <laughs> yeah. It it's you see the successful programs and with the you know, wars of attrition throughout the season, man. If you hadn't got depth, you you got no, trouble. It's true. Yeah, it's yeah, true. It's hey, true. when we won it in fifteen and oh in twenty ten. Our starting free safety and backup quarterback tears his knee out week five. Mm. Thank goodness we were able to create some depth, and we we put another guy at free safety, mm. and, and we were able to pick up and move the pieces around because you have depth. Yeah. You know, um, you know, on the perimeter, we we need work out there. You know, we graduated. I don't mind telling you, we graduated four really good receivers last year. Man, we did. They were dogs. Man, they had fight in them. They got after it. They could catch balls. They. They they were really really good and um this is the most inexperienced position group we have it is is and our receiver that is and let me tell you something we, we we need to throw the ball a little bit that's who we are we need to throw the ball a little mm. bit uh we had some drops but what what gets me and where we got to get better we we didn't block well at times in the perimeter and, and that we're going to get better at that because yeah. blocking is effort and want to. Yeah. And, and I, I can I, – I, I will replace that. You hear what I'm saying? We'll, we will find a way to make that happen because we were just – I know it sounds crazy because we didn't – so we, we were a couple of – if one man would have made his block on – we, 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 we have a chance to house that thing because – well, I know you've been showing me some videos, you know, and looking, yeah. and I mean, it's talking about a game of inches. I mean, you know, like you mm -hmm. said, one guy here, 
one guy, you know, just a foot away. Yeah. I mean, because of two, I was telling you about KJ. Even though they're about KJ and Zay, yeah, those guys, they're fast, and you let get them an open speed, they're they're gone. You don't <laughs> catch those guys. So, uh, yeah. I'm encouraged about that. I, I see a, a definite weakness where we got to improve on, and again. That's what spring is for. Yeah. It didn't take us losing a regular season game yet to, to make these changes and to address yeah. these problems. That's what spring is for. Yeah. That's why you play a team like Poplarville. Yeah. Somebody asked me, why do you play somebody that's so good? You know, why do you play somebody so good? I, because they will expose your weakness. I don't want to play somebody that don't expose us. We go out there and beat forward to nothing. We don't learn anything from that. Yeah. We better play somebody good so we can learn who we are yeah. and where we need to fix things immediately. Yeah. Because we still have time to fix it before yeah. the season starts. That's big to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and that's a great opportunity. And you got the summer, and then plus you're going to have another game before the season starts next year to. That's See right. Well, we got against Jackson. We got a half. Mm -hmm. You know, we play a half JV and a half varsity mm -hmm. according to our Mississippi State rules. So, uh, yeah. anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about our. Let's talk about our. I'm just summing up on the summing up on the offensive side of the ball. You know, I I would have as a fan. I'm sitting. I said, well, you know, I thinking coming in before you showed me some of these videos. I said, well, I wish we could have run the ball a little better. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see us run the ball better. But I see, you know, where we are. Just you, you can't mm -hmm. convey it unless you actually see these these slow motion videos. It shows you mm -hmm. really, really close. But you know, that only counts in hand. That hand, <laughs> hand grenades and horseshoes. That's right? right. That's right. Let's flip over to the defensive mm -hmm. side of the ball and and talk to to us a little bit about you know what you saw out of your defensive. I saw a bunch players. of guys that hustled. I saw a bunch of guys, Marshall, that gave maximum effort. I saw a bunch of guys that never argued. Um, did we get frustrated at times? Yes. Um, trying to stop the single wing. Have you ever I'm seen? Not, have you ever? Have you played against that before? I have, maybe twice in my career. That that was now what we saw Friday. Now I don't I don't mind telling you, and it, it kind of makes us look like, well, how do you not know? Well. We didn't have any idea that they were going out with a single wing and unbalanced with two H backs on one side. We had no idea. And um, anyway, <laughs> it, that's hard to defend when you know about it. Yeah. It's really, it's really <laughs> hard to defend when you don't know about it. <laughs> um, I saw us play hard. I saw us get a little bit high at times, and they watched us. Yeah. I mean, you think back when we last year. I mean, it was seven as as bad as we had played offensively. It was still seven nothing at halftime. Yeah, you know, I I kind of felt good because I figured we're not going to play nearly as bad the yeah. second half. And yeah. uh, let me tell you that that I'm going to tell you, Popperville's got a good football team. They've got those big 300 pound linemen, and they can move and pull. And they made us play within about a tight end to tight end box and. That's probably where you want to play us because um, we're fast yeah. and we're physical. But, Marshall, that is totally not what we'll see this year. We're yeah. going to see starting when we start with our, our preseason game with Jackson, Marshall, we're going to see probably unless somebody changes that we don't know about, we're going to see 11 straight spread football teams. Yeah. That's kind of how we're geared and built. Yeah. So, uh good to see us fight. Um, yeah. Heck, you want to hold them out. But um, – I, I, we 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 did a good job considering all. I'm very very pleased with those guys. Very pleased. I want to tell you, I want to brag of the guy. I know we got to take a break. Let me brag on Drake for just a second. Drake is our um. Well, he played corner. He's just free safety. Shaw Drake is Davis. Yeah. He made the play of the game. They had a young man. He busted out a sweep on their sideline. I don't know if you remember. And Drake hustled his tail off down there and pushed him out of bounds about the one yard line. Is that the first half? Yes, sir. Yeah. The very next play, the very next play, they fumble. You know, we that's our mentality. You yeah. know, they're not, they're not, they're not in yet. Yeah. And man, if you just make hustle plays like that, yeah. you never know what's going to happen the next play. And they then cough the thing up, and we got a big turnover there. At ha and that, and that's what let us drive the ball. That's what opened up our drive. Of course, we got the ball on the on the half inch line. Mm -hmm. You know, we did a quarterback sneak just to get it out, and mm -hmm. we got three yards. And at that time, it was the most positive rush we had. Mm -hmm. And then we hit the big pass to uh, Ivan McDougal down the sideline. Mm -hmm. So that was that was a huge turning point, probably the play of the game for us. So I, I was proud of Drake. That this that just characterizes who he is and how we how we play and and what we want to do on, on defense. And that's hustle. And they're not in yet. You know, mm -hmm. that's you know, they're not in yet. So mm -hmm. you, you keep making plays. So 
you know, and you, you, you'd like to have had a little more time, but, you know, you came up short on the opposite side, but you went, I don't know where you ran out of gas down there, but, I mean, you started inside your own one or at your own one in the passing. You know, you got the, you had the run there, but to get you a little room, and then you, you completed several passes in the deep ball to McDougal. You know, I think, I think that ball went, I, I tried, I can't remember, I added up, it was, what, 60, about 60 yards in the air. Yeah, it was almost 60 in the air. 57, I don't, 58 yeah. yards. By the time it, I, don't, I think from – it might have been a 47, 48-yard completion. Um, I don't have the stats in front of him by the time he caught it. But, you know, Carter dropped back. It, it was off one of our seven-step drops, and he dropped way back there. And mm-hmm. then we had to dodge a few people, and he, yeah. and he let it go. I mean, we, he had to throw. It was a 50-50 ball, so it was, um, you know, it was it was probably a good 50-yard. But it was in the air for a long yeah. time. And one one uh, we called him Ivan. one one is his nickname. <laughs> We uh, his grandmother gave him that nickname, but uh, he did a great one job one. adjusting in there. Like one one, so that's why he's got on eleven. One there one, you get go. it. So uh, anyway, that that was a good drive. We we just we missed a, we had a double handoff on a on a counter play that that had a good chance. We thought of scoring back to the field. We missed we missed that handoff, and uh, anyway that, that took us out of time. Yeah. So Carr did a good job of getting us down there. Did a good job of clocking the ball. We hadn't done that all spring. Yeah. He did a good job of spiking the ball, and stopping that. Man, and, um, mm-hmm. Did a good job managing the ball, and, he, mm-hmm. and he's going to he's going to he's going to give us a fighting chance in every game we play. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, let's wrap it up right quick. <clears throat> let's look at the varsity offensive defense. Okay, what did you see? Just sum it up. What do you see that you're happy about? And what do you well, see let me tell you, I'm happy about 23 running the football. I don't know if y'all saw him. I, I, I didn't. I, wanna... I, I, I... <laughs> I didn't want to say a whole lot about it. I wasn't staying away from that. And we're not gonna um we're not gonna do it a whole lot early, but you can bet when we get in district play, twenty three is gonna touch the football. Uh he had a good night and he didn't have but three carries. We had three carries for I want to say twenty yards. Yeah. He had positive yards. We knew that. And my my goal wasn't to go into that game and, and take Bubba and, and run him both ways and play him eighty plays, yeah. not not for a spring game. Yeah. I wanna give him a taste of it. He's done a little bit of it during practice and uh I was very pleased with that. Uh, again, when you, you think now, you get Isaiah back there, and you got Bubba that can bang in there too. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be okay. I, I would hate to have to tie. I, I would, but I'd hate to have to do that play after play after play, yeah. especially in the fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah. Tackling. I mean, the Bubba's two hundred twenty five, thirty pound running back. You know, and uh, again, we're not gonna try to do a whole lot of that early. Just we're gonna try to get a district and make that more of a district thing. And you may say, well, you're telling everybody, well, it doesn't matter right now. You know, that doesn't matter. You still got to stop him. Yeah. And uh, I'm, exci- I'm excited about that part. He, he's, a, he's a good football player for us. Well, we're looking forward to seeing more. We're looking to talk a little more about Warrior football. But for right now, we've got to take a break. We're going to hear yes, from sir. some of our sponsors, and we'll be right back after this word. Step into the extreme, extreme guns that is, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. You'll find the extreme with the area's only authorized Benelli dealer and the area's only Browning Master dealer. When we say extreme, we mean it, as we have the largest local selection of firearms. If optics is your game, extreme guns is an authorized dealer for Vortex Optics, along with thermal and night vision scopes in stock. In addition to firearms, optics, and ammunition, extreme has all of your bow hunting accessories. And we can even repair your cell phone while you look around. Step into and experience the extreme. You'll be glad you did. Extreme Guns, located 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. When you come out to eat with us at Boondock Eddie's, we care. We care about providing you with a pleasurable dining experience that you deserve and will be happy with. We care about the quality of food we prepare for and serve to you. We care about the service we provide if you're dining in or taking out. We care about providing you the best food you can find anywhere. At Boondock Eddie's, we put our hearts into what we prepare for you because we care. Come out to Boondock Eddie's and see for yourself. If you're looking for a pleasurable dining experience, we make it happen for you because at Boondock Eddie's, we care about you. So much to do and so little time. Get it all done and do it right with Circle C Tractor. Steel products like trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and accessories. Generate generators that are quieter than a Honda. There's only one place to go and get it all done, and that's Circle C Tractor. Located 1510 Azalea Drive. Open Monday through Friday, 7 until 5 and 8 until noon on Saturday. Locally owned and operated. Call 601-735-3103. 
When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, our friendly hometown team will steer you in the right direction toward the protection you need at a price you can afford. We offer a variety of discounts for a variety of reasons, from your car's safety features to your history of safe driving. Call Alpha agent Mark Gordon at 735-1186. Drive away with savings today at Alpha Insurance. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, well, we've school's about out, Whew. you know, and here Close. we go. We <laughs> headed into the summer. Let's talk about Wayne County High School War Eagle uh, football for the summer. Uh, you know what? What's up for the summer? When? Who? What you got to be doing? Well, that kind of stuff. All right. So <laughs> this, this is what we got. So we'll watch the film today and kind of put everything up. You know, our guys are, are probably tired. It's, it's the end of the year, man. They're tired. You baseball players just finished baseball season. They rolled. Or they, it's time for them to have a little bit of break. So after we kind of put everything to bed today, we're going to uh, give them a, a week or two off. And we'll reconvene June the 6th and start on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. But, Marshall, I'll tell you, um, you got – Guys, I know some of your top seniors. I, I say give them time off. I don't. I don't think they'll take time off because they'll they'll start. They we have several guys been invited to several football camps, so we'll start guys going to camps. And um, I want to talk about those camps now. Are these camps? Are these? Are do you have individual? Are they, some of these guys going to be individually going to camps, or are they going to be some group camps or a combination? No, it's it's more individual camps. Um, They'll go, and they've been invited to certain colleges to come to a camp and yeah. to do things. So, it's it's they'll be busy doing that. And yeah. Marshall, that's just the way of the world today. Your older seniors, if they're going to get signed, they're going to be seen in camp, and that's where they're going to. You know, we've we've had some guys that have been already offered. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but that's that's your Mississippi State, your Southern Miss. Uh, you got to go to camp and be seen in camp to yeah. you know to get to solidify that offer. And, yeah. Uh, they want to see you move and see how you take coaching, and yeah. they want they want to see you on the hoof, so to speak. So uh, no names or anything, but we got some guys. We got some guys been being recruited. We do. We've okay. got we've got three right now that have multiple offers. Three that have multiple offers, and and some of them are JUCO offers, and some of them are on the cusp of getting Division One offers. So, and let me tell you, that's that's nothing to hang your head about a JUCO offer. No sir. You right? Everybody's got a journey, and everybody's journey starts somewhere. So, uh, <laughs> yes, you know, so we're, we're, we're excited about that. Yeah. We're excited about that. It's good. That we had about 17 college coaches roll through here in the spring. Wow. So it's good to see them coming back, uh, wanting want to see these War Eagle guys. That's, that, that's exciting, uh, you know, for the kids. And, you know, and, and, and again, that drives on points that we get outside the lines a little bit, how important things are, such as grades and oh, stuff yeah. like that. But we'll come back to grades, that. Grades, character, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you ninth graders, you know, you, when you when you convene your summer workouts, you're going to have everybody that's going to be on that varsity team is going to be here. Are you are you ninth graders going to be participating? The eighth grade going into ninth, they will have. We hadn't set their date yet, but yes, they will have a time when they come and lift too. Okay, they, they will spend a lot more time with them in July. Um, okay, I say a lot more. That that's usually when I've always started those guys. But we last year we got them early, but this is a good problem this year. Last year we had plenty of room to house them. Now we don't have room enough for <laughs> ninety varsity and then fifty something eighth grade. So we we got to figure out you know how we can room wise how we can get them all wow. in here and get them going. Wow. So uh, that's a good problem to have. That's a so good problem. <laughs> I, I'm excited about that. So summer's Strength important. Numbers. Summer's important. Yeah. Uh, got to be here. Uh, got to be here. Got to. What will you do? During your summer workouts, what kind of activity? A lot of lifting, Marshall. A lot of conditioning. Um, you know, I like to feed them breakfast I can, you know. the, the, we, the summer feeding program. Well, they used to do that every year, but that's stopped now. So if we've got anybody that wants to um, help us with some breakfast for these young men, we'll be glad to take any and all donations for these guys. But they, because of supply supply chain shortage, it's uh -huh. just they, we've had some problems just getting stuff. and get. So I'm going to talk to some local businesses here, restaurants, see if they'll help, you know, feed these guys three days a week. Or we'll yeah. figure out some way to get them something. So. At least you can get something in them, but but nutrition is important. Having them something before we go work out is is, is huge. Uh, yeah, that's a big deal. I mean, you know, you a lot of your top programs do that. You could take meals. You could probably take protein bars. Oh, absolutely. Or, you know, whatever. Yeah, you absolutely. That's that's huge, and that's that's a big 
right now that's a burden that we need going into the summer. And I, I guess I got two weeks to figure it out. So uh, <laughs> I didn't know about it to Friday. So yeah. we're, we're gonna we're gonna now drop back and uh, not punt, but see if we can fit, call an audible and see if we can figure out how to get that there done. There you go. There you go. Um, so summer's critical. Well, y'all do, is critical. Will y'all do any outside competition stuff? Do y'all do the seven on sevens? And stuff we like we that? do. Uh, we'll host. Let me let me tell you. <clears throat> you and I talked about this about a month ago. I don't know if you remember. I know you do. Your mind's like an elephant, right? <laughs> it's like an elephant, all right. So I'm looking for something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we will do seven on sevens, but I even like more doing eleven on elevens, and that's legal to do. Um. I, mean, yeah, I remember you, you saying that, and I was sitting here we trying did to a couple, my mind we did, we did a couple of those before, and um, I did them in Alabama before I got here. That's that's almost like real deal football. Shoulder pads say, and helmets? No, no, no. Can't do no, nothing but helmets. Can't put on pads. Okay. But uh, you can do it, and it's modified. Obviously, you don't tackle the man and hit the man and take him to the ground. But yeah. you do a lot of fits and a lot of per- – I mean, you can still pass block, and it's still a lot of one-on-one. It's just a way to involve your linemen. You know, I see all these people doing this seven-on-seven. And we will do some seven-on-sevens, but – you know, we got to thinking a couple coaches and I, you know, years ago, man, we need to evolve our linemen in this, you know, because let me tell you, when you go throw the ball against Laurel or West Jones, bro, that's not seven on seven. You've got four of the meanest son of a gun bearing down on your head. To, to, you know, every, we can all look good and throw without any linemen in front of us. Linemen need to block and we need to pass and rush the pass. That, that's important. Um, So – Yes, we will do seven on sevens, but Marshall, we will include a few more eleven on elevens this year. And I, I'm going to tell you, it's just a philosophy of mine. I want those guys, I mean, foaming at the mouth, biting through nails in August when we get ready to play. Football is a long season. If you want to go to the state championship, and I'm sure Coach Boyles can act, attest to this, and Coach Main, you go 13, 14, 15 weeks, you got to be fresh. Mm. You got to be mentally fresh. You got to have some legs, and I know a lot of people. They'll go out here and start on June first, Marshall, and they'll be doing seven. They'll do seven on seven every day. We're, I'm, I found out it's better for us not to flood us with a ton of stuff early like that. You'll see us pick up late June into July, especially after Fourth of July. We'll rev that up more and do more stuff. Just you know. I don't need to go out there and win a state championship June first. We we need to build it up, and you know I want guys to be hungry. I want us to have a core foundation of our ways. Because let me tell you something, just like me and you and everybody else, you can burn these guys out, and it's not my goal to burn our football team out in June. Yeah. Because we did fifteen seven on sevens in June. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. just so to speak. But we'll do we'll do more as we get closer to season. Yeah. And I can't wait. We're, we're going. War Eagles going to have a great summer. That, it's critical. Yeah. We got parents listening. Have your child up here. It's, it is too important. You win games in the summer when those stands are empty and nobody's watching. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the fall. Uh, we're going to get through the summer. Uh, when will you officially begin practice for your fall, for the fall? Ooh, I don't have my schedule. Don't have, on I, I don't see, have yeah. my schedule. I got Do I got my June and July. We will start whenever we are legally allowed to start. <laughs> the day, well, the, that the day, high school day. Yes, so it's you usually play. that first Monday around. August. I don't like I said. I don't have my calendar with me. I'm thinking. Um, That's something we can post on Facebook. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, you know you gotta you gotta always start them days in shorts early. But uh, Marshall, let me tell you something. When we get there. Um, it looks like it may be either August 1st or August 8th. i okay. got to look at it. Um, All right. It's probably going to be August 1st this year because we play the 19th. That will give us two weeks in game week. So, you know, last year I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been around the 4th. I can't remember where that Monday fell. But, yeah. uh, so I'm looking looking at August 1, but i I got to look it up make sure that's the right date. Um, it's It's important. To have a great summer, though, going back, it's important to have a great summer. I don't know if if people understand how important summer is. That's where you get in shape. You know, you don't. I I know the mind twenty years ago. I said, you know, I heard a bunch of group of coaches talking. Man, I can't wait to get them in here in August. We got to get in shape and get them ready for. The, man, if you got to get in shape in August, you done late. missed it, brother. <laughs> you done missed it. You better come in. You know, my goal, my philosophy. You come in in shape. And then when we can start officially, then we start doing football. We, we don't come in here and get it. We're already in shape. Yeah. 
So that's what summer's for to get in shape. Yeah. And uh, I will say this about your team since I've been here. I mean, I hadn't seen a bunch of cramping and, and stuff it, last year and this mm -hmm. year and at the game the other night. I mean, your team, they're in shape. Well, that's, so, that's uh, important. And I, I, let me tell you, I was proud of our of our team Friday night. I mean, I'll back up a little bit. I don't, you know, we didn't talk about this, talking about being in shape. Being that we had one penalty for five yards. We jumped off size one time. Mm -hmm. We had zero guys that came out of the game because of cramps. Zero turnovers. Zero turnovers. Two takeaways. And two takeaways. So there there were a lot of good things. You know, yeah. you tell me we play a four-quarter game, and as hot as it was, usually you got several guys cramping. And, and that's and the defense stayed on the field a lot longer than offense. Yeah, they did. Um, so I, I was there. There was a lot of – a lot of good things, not to not to back up on us, but um, no, we good. I do want to close. We're about out of time, but I want to just address thing briefly. The twin thieves, how's that working out for you? Still, you got a you got a core group, you got a leadership group. How many is in that leadership group? Well, right now we've got ten. Okay. But after we finish this book, we're gonna we're gonna restart it with another group. Okay, um, we're gonna start it with them. It's going really good. They're learning. I, I, I saw some good things Friday night yeah. during during the midst of adversity. You know, here's the thing, Marshall. Anybody can play when they feel good. What I mean by that, yeah, look, yeah. Well, if you're up 21 nothing, anybody can lead. Anybody, everything's going good. You know, I saw, and you saw this Friday night, a team that didn't unravel. Yeah, we were down. We kept fighting. We kept fighting for one another. I heard them on the side. There were some good things said. There was some good communication going on. There, there was a, a lot of – a positive that that came from this, and um, our leadership core was part of that. You know, I just just briefly, I use the name Twin Thieves. And that's the title of a book that's addressing areas that can steal your thunder, can steal your attitude. You know, the thieves that do that. That's this is a Absolutely. leadership book teaching teaching us how to how to lead and how to be led. Absolutely, yeah. and we'll go through that. This, like I said, we'll finish up. I, I want to say with a group march when we started, we're at the end. I think we're at chapter twenty one with these guys, and. Uh, well, new, so we'll finish that up, and we'll we'll hey we'll start another group just as soon as we get finished, and I'm looking forward to that too. All right, that's brother. you got to teach them to be better leaders and better men. Amen. That's what it's all about. Yes, sir. Uh, well, Coach, your horns blowing, so we got to go. I want everybody to remember that you can keep up with all things War Eagle football on Facebook at War Eagle football and on YouTube at Wayne County High School War Eagle football. Be encouraged to support our sponsors because they sponsor War Eagle football, and now it's time to go. So, Marshall Wood, Coach Jack Hankins for Wayne County High School War Eagle football. One, two, three, baby. We yeah. out. Step into the extreme, extreme guns that is, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. You'll find the extreme with the area's only authorized Benelli dealer and the area's only Browning Master dealer. When we say extreme, we mean it, as we have the largest local selection of firearms. If optics is your game, extreme guns is an authorized dealer for Vortex Optics, along with thermal and night vision scopes in stock. In addition to firearms, optics, and ammunition, extreme has all of your bow hunting accessories, and we we can even repair your cell phone while you look around. Step into and experience the extreme. You'll be glad you did. Extreme Guns, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. When you come out to eat with us at Boondock Eddie's, we care. We care about providing you with a pleasurable dining experience that you deserve and will be happy with. We care about the quality of food we prepare for and serve to you. We care about the service we provide if you're dining in or taking out. We care about providing you with the best food you can find anywhere. At Boondock Eddie's, we put our hearts into what we prepare for you because we care. Come out to Boondock Eddie's and see for yourself. If you're looking for a pleasurable dining experience, we make it happen for you because at Boondock Eddie's, we care about you. So much to do and so little time. Get it all done and do it right with Circle C Tractor. Steel products like trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and accessories. Generate generators that are quieter than a Honda. There's only one place to go and get it all done, and that's Circle C Tractor. Located 1510 Azalea Drive. Open Monday through Friday, 7 until 5 and 8 until noon on Saturday. Locally owned and operated. Call 601-735-3103. 
When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, our friendly hometown team will steer you in the right direction toward the protection you need at a price you can afford. We offer a variety of discounts for a variety of reasons, from your car's safety features to your history of safe driving. Call Alpha agent Mark Gordon at 735-1186. Drive away with savings today at Alpha Insurance. Thanks for listening to Wayne County Football Show, brought to you by Extreme Guns, Alpha Insurance, Boondock Eddies, Circle C Tractor, 